Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey, Hi everybody, it's Alex Bennett, it is the Ramble, and uh, we go here for another week. Yes, we do. Oh, let me turn that down. Uh, I was getting a little feedback there. Uh, uh, the, uh, another week of uh, hijinks and so on, and we go until uh, midnight Eastern Daylight Time. You're not seeing me right now because the next uh, half, uh, about 25 minutes, is going to be a pre-recorded audio interview. Uh, and it was recorded today, but it was one of two that we did that I thought of running next week. But the thing I was talking about was something I should have run tonight. So, well, you'll you'll hear what go- is going on as we talk to one of our oldest and dearest friends. Time once again to go out to the other coast of the United States of America, to San Francisco, California, wherein resides the, as I said uh, last week, the rent-controlled. Larry Bubbles Brown. Yeah. <laughs> Things are very, very expensive there, but not for you, Larry. Not for me, although our, our friend Steve Pearl has just uh, is leaving the area to move to Las Vegas because of the expense out here. You, is it cheaper in Vegas? Oh, much cheaper, yeah. It's, really? Uh, I think he said there's a two-bedroom apartment in a gated community there for 900 versus... You know, oh. Two and three thousand out here for a dump. So. Well, what was his apartment going to? Well, he wasn't even living in San Francisco. He was in Walnut Creek, but I think he said the building got bought. I think he was paying like close to two thousand, but it was going to go up another thousand or something. So. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's going to be. It's going to take. Uh, it, it, so it was going up thousands. You say? Yeah. The, you know, people buy a building, and then you're screwed. So. Oh boy. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. So he's moving to Vegas. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what's he going to do there? Be a magician? Uh, well, <laughs> he's got, uh, there is work down there. There's not much work here anymore, so I think he's got a better chance of uh, getting some stuff going there. Yeah, yeah. You know, we didn't talk about last week, and you wanted to talk about was me doing national radio. Right, you were just on uh, CBS. No, it wasn't CBS. It was Westwood One, and we did it out of CBS. It, the CBS building. I think. The, out of the CBS building. Yeah. Right. Uh, they Westwood One has studios there, and uh, so uh, I did the show uh, for my friend Walter Sterling, uh, who does the show out of his home in Cleveland. Actually, he does it out of his laundry room. Uh, and you say, how is that all possible? Alex, yeah, I remember the day where when I went to work for a radio station, it was a physical property downtown, and I would drive there every morning. <laughs> and there would be We're a control there board, early. <laughs> and there would be a, you know, yeah, exactly. So um, uh, I, uh, you know, um, it, it's but it's not like that anymore. So what happens is the station he does it out of for some reason is in. I think Philadelphia, right? Uh, And um, WPHT or something like that. So down there is the board op and the phone screener. And in New York, they put me in this studio with a microphone. And then I got the engineer in my ear. Her name was Elena, and she was really good. She just did a terrific job. Um... And made it very easy for me. But nevertheless, it's like you're completely disjointed. You know, I'm used to going into a room. There's the engineer. There's the phone screener. I sit down. Boom, boom, boom. We have a good time together. Here, I can't see their reactions or see what they're doing. And, it, it, you know, so um, it, it was a whole different kind of experience for me that I had never done before. And I thought it would turn out to be an absolute disaster. And it wasn't. It turned out to be actually, I thought, uh, quite good. I thought I did a superb job. So, 
uh, you know. But then the the, the pressing, okay, it, it, you know, you and I always look at the cup half full, right? Right, right. So, I mean, a guy asked me to do his show, his national show. It's a Sunday night show called Sundays with Sterling. And I, I, I'm there to do the show. And it's wonderful. I'm having a great time. And the three hours is over with, and I go home, and I'm depressed. Because I realize this may be the last time I'll ever see the inside of a radio station. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I thought I had already done that, but now I have a chance. And it's kind of like I'm hungry, and you just showed me a steak but told me I can't eat it again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I... Um, that kind of that kind of has depressed me. I've been going through postpartum depression. Now, hopefully, he may ask me to do it again. Uh, and how you how long were you on? I was on for three hours. That's a long time to fill. Well, you say that's a long time to fill, but uh, at least twenty one minutes of every hour are commercials and news brands and, and news. But yeah. uh, still, and how many guests did you have? Uh, I had Durst on, and I had my ex wife on. So that was it. I, yeah, the rest of the time I was, but you know, uh, I haven't been on the air in five years. I could, I had nothing but stuff to talk about, you know. So when nobody called, I had you know, it, trouble. Is when people called, I had to stop talking what I was talking about, and take the call. Mm -hmm. So uh, anyway, it uh, it went it, it went really well. But, you know, again, it's like I, I was fed a beautiful dinner and then told you're never going to eat like that again. You know, so, uh, well, so, you'll be back. Well, I, you know, I hope he asked me back. The only problem is I may have done too good a job. You know, I don't know. You That's know. true. You don't want to do too good. I remember when, when Johnny Carson used to go on vacation, he'd have the worst guest host. I, I hated that. And then, oh, it's because he didn't want anyone else be better than him it, well yeah um you know i mean he he told me he wasn't going to listen because he doesn't like to listen to replacements or whatever i don't know mm -hmm. but i you know nevertheless uh, it was it was a it was a good experience i know to a lot of people this is playing uh, maybe i should reverse the order in which i play these interviews yeah i'll play this one uh tonight uh, yeah, because because it's talking about the the situation, but it's very strange. It's very strange uh, for me to see what radio has become. That you know that Walter does his show from his house in Cleveland, from his literally from his laundry room. In fact, he makes a joke about it. He says, "From the laundry room," you know. <laughs> but uh, all you're all you're dealing with, I mean, and this this. Uh, uh, engineer uh, slash producer down in uh, Philadelphia was just wonderful. I mean, she would count me down to the breaks and she would uh, uh, tell me when my mic was hot again and things like that. I mean, she was just really, really good. And so it made it very easy for me. So I kind of felt like I was in the studio, but I'm still talking into this, this microphone. And um, I guess it, you know, it was going out to the rest of the country. But then, then they go into these breaks. People don't know this. They go into these commercial breaks. And, of course, to you out there listening to it, it's a commercial break. To me in the studio, it's this fill music that they have going to keep the, the audio going on the network. And it's the same fill music over and over. It's like, it's like waiting on hold, you know, mm -hmm. at, uh, at, uh, at Apple or someplace like that, you know, so... But anyway, so other than that, I've been very depressed also because I, I bought this um, this thing called a Mac Mini from a friend of mine who no longer wanted his. And I bought it for like 300 bucks from him. And the other day, I plugged the thing in and sparks come flying out of it. And then it's dead. Only the power light will go on and the fan starts going. And so I'm, I'm taking it to Apple. If it's a logic board, it could cost me $700 or something like that, which I'm not going to pay because I can buy a new one for a couple of hundred dollars more, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or it just could be the power supply and that the light goes on and the fan goes because they're independent of the power supply. But, boy, I'm telling you, I, and I, you should have seen the sparks fly when I plugged it in. Wow. And I couldn't figure out why that was happening, you know. 
So, um, I, I kind of gave up on that. That was ridiculous. So that was depressing me. And that happened the night before I was going to go in and do the show. So I was up well, like till 3 o'clock in the morning trying to solve the problem. And then I went to sleep and woke up early. So now by the time I go down to do the show, I'm half exhausted because I didn't get enough <laughs> sleep. And I'm worried that I won't be able to do the show. But I went and did the show okay. So, you know, you're a pro. Because I'm a pro. Meanwhile, I'm on a fixed income, and I don't know how I'm going to replace that Mac. So, well, you know. they need to they need to have you back on the air. Well, that's you know that was part of what I talked about on the show. Uh, you know, why am I not working? Is it because I suck? Well, I don't think that's really a possibility. You know, I think I'm okay at what I do. Um, it's because of my age. Yeah, the, purely the one age. discrimination that's accepted. Yeah, I mean, and I talked about it. You know, that uh, when I was when I left. Um, uh, Sirius XM, uh, they were going to give me severance, 16 week severance. <clears throat> I worked for them nine and a half years, and all I got was a lousy 16 week severance. I don't know how they figure that one out. Anyway, they said, okay, here, we want you to sign this release before we give you the severance. And I went, what? They said, yeah, release. I said, what is it for? Said, that you won't sue us for age discrimination. Really? I said, you do realize that having me sign this piece of paper is in and of itself age discrimination. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she they just admitted it. She kind of went, yeah, I guess. You know, uh, because they wouldn't have asked a 35-year-old to sign that. No. You know, they just give you the uh, severance and, you know, or you might sign something saying you won't sue them for wrongful termination. Just because you sign things like that doesn't mean, by the way, that you can't. Right. You know. So he said, okay, I'll sign it because I could sue you anyway. You know. So, uh, it, uh, but uh, that immediately made me realize that part of the reason they fired me was my age. Yeah. And also that I was making more money than somebody who they could get to replace me. And the reason I was making more money than a lot of other people on the floor was because uh, I... Um, uh, 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 I, I, I've been in the business so long that I deserve more money. And companies like to get rid of all their older people because they want more money and they can get somebody for less. You know? So, so basically, for the hour, first hour, I talked about aging and about the problems with aging. Um, the worst part... Of, I brought this up to one person who called. I should have mentioned it in the in the monologue that I did. But you become invisible to people. You know, like if you're old and you're on a subway, you're invisible to the rest of the people on the subway. I mean, if you're 25 and you're a hot-looking chick, you're not invisible. No. <laughs> you know? But do you feel you become invisible? Yeah, it's just, uh, it, it, like, invisible is a perfect word. They don't. They don't dislike you. They don't like you. They don't see you. They don't exactly. They don't pay attention to you. Right. Uh, and it's as though you just don't exist. And so uh, you know that's that's not fun. That's not wonderful. I don't like that. You know. Nope. Uh, so uh, that happens. And there are a lot of other things that happen as you get older. But it, that's what we that's what we dealt with on the first hour of the show. And I said that at the end of the show, I would reveal my age, which would be a career killer. And that I was going to do something nobody else would do because my point was, number one, do you know how old, oh, I don't know, um, it, do, do a lot of movie stars say how old they are? The only time you find no. out how old they are is if one of those entertainment shows says, oh, today is Scarlett Johansson's 34th birthday. But you don't know that's her 34th birthday. That's what she says she is. Yeah. You know? Um, not, not that I don't think she's maybe 34, but that's what she says she is. And that people lie about their age in show business all the time. Because they, don't, they know that if, if all of a sudden I, I tell you on the air how old I am, you're then going to filter all your opinions of me not through what I'm saying on the air, but through my age. 
Right. You know. And um, so most people would not. So at the end of the show, I told them I was 78. I said, I got nothing to hide. I'm really 84, folks, but I lie about <laughs> my age. You know. Do you lie about your age ever? Uh, yeah, yeah, I used to say I was older than I was. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it looks great. For well, somebody, I had a, a one woman I knew who said she always told people she was older than she was so that they would then say, boy, you look great for your age. Yeah. You know. Um, but now do you lie about it at all? No, there's no point at this point. You know, there's, I think people, plus people can look shit up on the Internet and yeah. there's no privacy, so. Yeah. Yeah, but would you have, uh, you know, like, would you, if if you met a woman, if you were going online to one of these dating sites, have you ever done a dating site? Uh, I never did one, but I quite, from, I used to look go on them all the time just to look at people. Yeah, okay, so you go on to the, the website, uh, and you do, um, um, you, you, you do dating. When you did, did you say you ever used them? Actually, used them? Or you Never just, used oh, them. Oh, you no. just looked at them. Uh, uh, everybody lies about their age. That's what uh, the younger comics said. That's apparently that's quite true. They all lie about their age. Now, my wife lied uh, by five years, and I lied by five years. But then, after we started seeing each other, I said, "I got to tell you something. I'm not really that. I'm this, <laughs> right?" But she stuck to her guns about her lie. Really? So much so that she would pay full ticket for a movie rather than get a senior. That's how committed she that's how committed she was to the lie. It was committed cost her money. She was committed. I was thinking of getting a divorce because she married me under false pretenses. She told me she was five years younger than she was. And I told the story on the radio program about the birthday party they held for her, her 65th birthday. And I thought I thought it was just another birthday. I didn't know it was the 65th. And I went to it, and everybody's up toasting her. And this is, to, you know, Marjorie, and uh, boy, uh, you know, uh, you've made it this far, Marjorie. And I'm, I'm just, I'm oblivious to it. I Nobody's told me it's a 65th birthday party. Mm -hmm. So I then have to go. I don't know why I had to leave early because I had to work the next day. I think that was it. And so I went. I left early. And then uh, after, about a couple of weeks later, I met my friend Steve's. And he says, boy, that was a great birthday, 65th birthday party for Marjorie. And I went, what? He said, 65th birthday. I said, it was her 65th birthday? He says, what do you think that birthday party was for? I said, I thought it was just, you liked her and you were holding a birthday party. And now I'm thinking, and I know, people are thinking less of me because I never got up and made a speech, you know, congratulating her on her 65th birthday. And so I'm immediately, I immediately call her up and go, how old are you? <laughs> and she said, I'm 65. I said, you lying sack of shit. <laughs> you made me you made me look like an absolute asshole believing <laughs> that you were 65 you were you were like uh, 60 okay or whatever lie you were perpetrating at the time it's hilarious yeah it wasn't hilarious for me not at that time <laughs> you know but but as i say so committed to the lie that like at 62 you can get senior tickets now or something I think that's the age for a senior ticket in a movie she would always buy a full adult wow you know so she was so committed to the lie and she paid for the tickets for our movies uh, but I you know I, I've just never lied about my age and um, you're the, the most open person I know the only the only time I really was embarrassed by it was when I was 62 and I was able to buy a ticket, for a senior ticket. And I'm going to take advantage of that. Hell, I don't mind. You know, cheaper movie tickets, terrific. All right? I don't know why it's cheaper. I'm still taking up the same amount of seat room as a, as, as a full-fledged adult. But I, I take the senior. But now I'm going out with a woman who is like she's in her uh, 40s. 
but she's going to some college, right? So uh, I uh, I go up there and I say, okay, I want one uh, one senior, and she'll have. She says, student, student, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now there, I was really embarrassed because I'm with somebody who's getting in on a student discount, which is essentially the same as the senior discount. And, uh, you know, under normal conditions, if you couldn't see that she wasn't like, you know, a kid. But that was that was the one time that I felt resentful in saying how old I was. But I've, I've always been willing to take anything. Hey, you want to give me Medicare? I'm taking it. You know? You want to give me a, 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 a cheaper supplemental on my insurance? I'm taking it. You want to give me a free this or a free that because I'm an old fart? I'm taking it. But, you know, I mean, it, you know, the, it, it, we still pay $42 for the two of us to go to a movie theater now. And we're getting the senior ticket. Wow. Well, we go to the comfy chair theater where they have these lounge chairs. Mm-hmm. And they charge, I think, $4 more a ticket for that. And then we go to a 3D movie, and they charge $4 more for that. So that's where the 42 comes from. Otherwise, it might be a little cheaper. You know, so. I'm out of the loop. I had no idea. Yeah, but at least I can buy a senior ticket for her now because she's not lying any longer. She's not lying. <laughs> Oh, boy. So you've been doing any great jobs? You, 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 you couldn't be on with me on Sunday night because you... No, I had some uh, one-nighter down in the Sunnyvale, so that was it. Yeah, i just been working the first six or seven months for the business I've been in years, and now it looks like it's all going back to the normal. So, uh, oh, so you were really busy. You made some bucks this year. I made some bucks, you know. Yeah. yeah mostly well, because uh, some guy... Had me open for him. It gets a lot of really good gigs. And Is that Dana? Uh, no, Dana. Uh, Dana's working more, getting his kids in the business. He's not doing that much now. But uh, Felipe Esparza, who won last comic standing a few years ago, he's getting a huge following, and he's going all over the country and selling out two and three thousand seat rooms. So he's had me open for him, and those are really fun. Well, that's very nice. But it, it, does he get a Spanish audience? Uh, it's. Getting it for, uh, when I first started working four years ago, it was almost all uh, Spanish. So I, I think they thought I was an ICE agent. It, uh, <laughs> they didn't they like me. Yeah, they didn't particularly like me. But now it's getting a little more of a crossover now. Oh boy! Oh, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, uh, yeah that's that's interesting. I uh, uh, because I would think that you know, uh, opening up for a. a Basically, a, 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 is he Mexican? Yeah. A Mexican act. Would, mm-hmm. A lot of Mexicans would come to see him, which I'm sure is the truth, but then all of a sudden they've got this, the whitest man alive, <laughs> Larry Bubbles Brown, or as they know you, Senor Bubbles. <laughs> the gringo. You ought to find out how to say bubbles in Spanish. I should, yeah. El FOMO. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, that be that should be my new name, El Fomo. Yeah, I have to look it up. I'll look it up next time and see what. Look it up. Uh, yeah, email me that. I'd love that. Yeah. So this guy gets big audiences, huh? Two and three thousand seats. Yeah, selling out everywhere. So, so who are you working with on uh, on on Sunday? Who are you? Oh, just a couple of locals down there. Yeah. Oh, I see. Sunnyvale. It was it was a lo- oh it was a local deal. I see. You know that, and that's the uh, Sunnyvale. It used to be the country store. Now it's Rooster Teeth Feathers, and uh, the claim to fame is it had the it had another name in the, like the seventies, but it was the installation. The first Pong machine was tried out there. Well, because it's Silicon Valley. Yeah, right down there. It's, it's, it's literally two miles from Apple. Boy, when you think about Pong. And the people who were addicted to Pong. And it was the silliest, stupidest game ever invented. It was just, yeah, it was black and white. Yeah. 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 I remember they had one backstage of this club up in Sacramento. It had, uh, it was just basically ping pong, right? Basically, yeah. 
And and uh, uh, the guy who started that then sold Atari and started uh, what's that thing the, uh, with the with the bear uh, uh, uncle uh, what is it I'm trying to think of it now you know the kids place it's a place where you go and you get food for kids um, oh at Chuck E Cheese Chuck E Cheese that was it Chuck E Cheese the Pizza Time Theater and I remember when it first started. I'm working at KMEL, and I look down in the uh, parking lot, and there's this guy in a giant, what appears to be, mouse suit. <laughs> and, and I go, that, that's what is that? And the next thing I know, they got this giant mouse coming into the studio. And they said, this is for Chuck E. Chimes Pizza, Pizza Time Theater, Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater, and blah, 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 and they do the whole plug and everything. I go, oh, that's very nice. I said, uh, why is the guy dressed as a mouse? He says, no, he said, that's not a mouse. That's Chuck E. Cheese. He's a rat. <laughs> a rat. I said, you've got a rat as a, as a, as a mascot for a kid's <laughs> restaurant? I said, that's not going to play well. Well, it played well enough. They made money for several years, but... That, Chuck E. Cheese is a rat. Okay, so remember, hey, I ran out of time here. Wow. <laughs> we can pick it up. It's good. We'll pick it up the next time. We'll pick it up the next time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he's fun. He's uh, he's a laugh riot, and he's my good friend, Larry Bowles Brown. Thanks, Bubs. Thanks, my good friend, Alex. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gabby. The Great American Broadcast Network. Okay, so I love Bubs. Okay, that's uh, all right. Okay, I love Bubs. I think Bubs is just the funniest, one of the funniest people I know, and he makes me laugh really hard when he says stuff funny. And uh, let me get my phones just right here because I want this to go out in stereo. I don't know. I um, I'm getting tired of using these earphones. I wish my Bluetooth earphones would work. But they don't because there's a delay on the Bluetooth, so I never can quite get them going. Uh, where are we? Let me open up the Skype lines, the Skypey lines, uh, which is pretty simple for me to do. I just click a button here, I go online, and then our Skype buttons are, uh, our Skype lines are open, which means that you can uh, you can talk to me using Skype. If you don't know how to do that, it's very simple. Uh, go over to gabnet.net, and on the right-hand side of the page is a whole, tu whole tutorial uh, how to call using uh, using uh, using uh, Skype. Okay, so uh, do it. Do it now so you don't forget. That's what they always say on television, right? Do it now so you don't forget. This offer is a limited offer. Call now so you don't forget. Well. Uh, give me a call on uh, on uh, on uh, the uh, the uh, Gabnet um, uh, Skype line. S call now so you don't forget. Otherwise, the host you know could die at any moment, and this may be your last chance to talk to him. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm sitting here waiting for the first people to call. This is why I I you know I I don't start talking about anything because I feel I feel compelled when people to call to answer. You know, like I was doing the show the other night, and people start calling, and I'm in the middle of something I'm saying, and I see somebody's waiting online, and I go, hey, yeah, I gotta take the call, you know? So anyway, uh, don't let them get away. Uh, when, I was a, when I was a kid, I worked at a station called KTIM in San Rafael, and they did a man on the street broadcast. And I learned that when you did the man on the street broadcast, the best way to get people to talk to you best way to get people to talk to you was to like take the microphone cord and wrap it around their feet as they were walking by and i've been doing that ever since now with people who call me i just kind of wrap you know oh look look who's on a uh, on a treadmill to oblivion there no no, no i'm in costco oh you're in costco oh. <laughs> i thought he was working out too. no costco man you're at costco i'm at costco yeah hey. uh Okay. Uh, uh, don't, uh, now I know what you're going to do. You're going to go by the, the the pens, and you're going to say, "Do you need these, Alex?" Right? <laughs> yeah. I, oh, I'm almost there. Yeah. I was planning on that. Yes. Let's see. That's uh, that's all the cheeses and stuff there, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And uh, yeah, you know, uh, yours looks a little better than mine. You know, they're all different. They they don't all oh, have yeah. the same things. 
And now you're coming up on, uh, what is that uh, part you're coming up on? That's the meat department, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. now we're going to have the fish over here. Maybe yeah. I'll get some salmon. Yeah, this is what may, has made this program so incredible. Is just stuff like this, you know. This is riveting. Let's take a trip through Costco. How much? Okay, now will you go over there a second? I want you to see something. How much? Uh, look at a price on one of those things for prime beef. How much is the? How much is the price? Okay, this is beef ribeye steak. Forty-two dollars. Uh, Forty-two. Forty. Um, Forty-three dollars for uh, two point two six pounds. Wow, that's that's the prime though, right? I think yeah. you, I think you got slightly better prices where you are. Where are you in? Uh, uh, this is Mountain View, California. Yeah, yeah. Let's look at some more more of the meat prices there. Well, that's hamburger. It doesn't. Is that the kosher hamburger? Isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Have you ever tried the kosher yeah, yeah. hamburger? It just doesn't taste like hamburger. It tastes like you know, old, it tastes like old Jews. It does. It's all musty. Let's see. Um, there you go. There's well, here's your, your beef ribeye. Okay. That's now, about, where's the, they used to have filet mignon. Okay, wait a minute. There's a flank. There's a flank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much is the flank? Uh, it's eight ninety nine a pound. Yeah, which is, how much for that that one you're showing That's us right 32 now? That's $32.09. See, please. see how much the prices are on meat now? They've just gone, I, I don't uh, buy meat are there, There's four or five it's, steaks in there. No, there are only two, two uh, usually two flank steaks. Uh, let's in the, see, in that's three point five seven pounds for yeah. thirty two bucks. Yeah, Wait, it used to be way cheaper in Costco. I spent, what happened? I went. I know. I I spent thirty three bucks this week, but I got I got the beef loin, but I got steaks that were two inches thick, and I cooked it tonight. And I I I think I should have started cooking it at about three o'clock this afternoon on the grill and come back. I never could quite get it cooked, and then it was uh, it was gristly on top of it. That's the other problem uh, with Costco uh, meat. You never know. Some weeks it's great, and other weeks it's just yeah. horrible. You know. But, so should I eat get one of these wild salmons? Well, the salmon like, at, at Costco is very good. You know. Yeah, I'm gonna get one. Well, you yeah. can get one of those, or you can go down. I'll tell you what's good. If you go down, they have salmon, and uh, uh, maybe maybe you don't have it there, but pesto. Uh, uh, balls. And oh yeah, yes, we yeah, have bought that. Yeah, go back. That get rid of good. that. Get rid of that salmon. Go well, get. Let the, me see if they have it though. Yeah, yeah, I'm it sure. looks like they don't have it today. Oh, here it is. Wait a minute. The salmon no, with pesto. No, they don't. Have, they don't have it today. The salmon with pesto is usually down with the salads. Oh, oh, okay. At least it isn't okay. mine. Well, here it's usually here in the same spot. Yeah. God, I and feel. Like, but it's not, but it's not here. I feel like huh. I'm doing something I do every week. You know, go to Costco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's 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 an outing. Yeah, I saw the, I saw I think I saw a video with you and uh, Mar Marjorie in Costco or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, arguing about the depends. Well, he, she he she does her little depends routine. Yells out at the top of her lungs, "Hey, Alex, do you need your depends? If you, you, you run out, oh, yeah. well, I better do that before my battery runs out." Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess so because I, so we wouldn't want you to miss out on that. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so it uh, was, uh, uh, you know, uh, so it's, we're, it's nice being at Costco. Uh, it's, it's just uh, my regular life. I uh, this week I had to return a monitor that blew on oh. me. I had a whole bunch of equipment blow on me at the same time because it was all hooked together when it when I got this this. I don't After know. it blew you, did you come? No, no. And oh jeez! So it, 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 I had the, the Mac Mini that he gave me blue, so I got to take it down to Apple tomorrow and see if I can get it repaired. If I can, I got another place to go to that does it cheap. And then, are you covered no, by your no. homeowner's insurance? No, we're not. No, when you have a, a, they a don't, socket that they don't cover electronics at all. They, uh, I have to do that special. I have to like oh. have a. I can't. I can't. I can't. I'm, I, told, I told Marjorie. Uh, don't count me in on paying for, for it next year for the home renter's insurance because the only stuff that I have that I really would like to insure is electronic equipment. Then you have to schedule it. Yeah, then you have to schedule it. Now, you know, it, And then they charge you more for your insurance, of course, when you schedule right. it. Yeah, so. depending on the value of what you schedule. And, you know, I didn't stop to think about scheduling that. 
You know, it just it, it never occurred to me. I never had a piece of equipment blow on me like that. I plugged it into the wall and sparks flew. And, and wow. then now, it, it went was out. Was it the socket? I, it might have been the socket. It could have been anything. But I'm, I'm hoping that what blew uh, was uh, like a, 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 fuse a fuse inside the, the machine. The, the yeah. LED still lights up and the fan still goes on, but nothing else. And I'm thinking that they may be on a slightly different circuit, that they're directly wired into the... So, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. And if that... Now, well, well, that machine was 2015. I had Apple Care. Yeah. And it was good for three years. Oh, really? Yeah. So, 15, 16, 17, 18. I think it might be five, six months out of... Oh. Out of... Oh, perfect. Fuck. Fuck. That's good engineering yeah. right there. Huh? That's great engineering right there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but anyway. I gotta buy another one. I never had this. Well, I never had this. Well, I'm I'm gonna wait till they're coming out with the new Mini Max in uh, October. So I'm gonna wait till they do that. You know. And I may I may put out for one because I want something as a backup for my regular Mac in case it goes out. And these things are perfectly acceptable to run as a you know. So anyway. Well, but where was I? Oh, yeah, we're at Costco. Are we? Are we near the depends? Yeah. Are you getting near yeah, the depends? Know, they, always, they keep moving them. Oh, really? Uh, so I'm surprised you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I've always. It's what's hot. that noise? No, that's uh, that's uh, that's Kevin. He's mic tap, check. He's Kevin tapping Mike. his oh, Mike microphone. Check. Yeah. Yeah, I'm always thinking of my future, planning yeah. ahead. Yeah. Uh, so. I always got to make sure I know I, where I the depends are. I think the pens are right there somewhere. I just, I, it looks like. Well, it. these are the baby ones. Yeah. These are the ones for, I think that, I think in this Costco, they put them over, over by the drugs. <laughs> so you can get your, you can get your, you can get your depends drugs. and your yeah. Metamucil all at one time. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, these are just for kids here. Well, let me see. Here yeah. comes uh, here comes Jeff Stein. Okay. Wait, yeah. I was gonna I was gonna say I got a fifteen pound brisket there a couple weeks ago for fifty four bucks. That wasn't bad. Well, it's still. Uh, we don't have brisket. You know, it's still too expensive. You know. Yeah, it, it was a more expensive brisket. You can get them cheaper at uh, what do you call it? Uh, Smart and Final. Well, you know what I find yeah, out? but they still the have nuts. the human. Uh, Smart and Final, they still got the human remains in the brisket. You yeah, that's tasty though. It gives it more flavor. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but the, uh, the, the it, Jeffrey Dahmer version. Yeah, yeah, just watch the fingernails. Yeah, uh, it, it get in your teeth. Yeah, the brisket. Uh, I uh, yeah. <laughs> what do I do? Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. The nuts are a really good deal, though. The nuts. If you are, like nuts? Yeah, nuts are good. Uh, yeah. How much? Well, wait a minute. You got the cashews there? Big, big thing. Uh, let's cashews? see. These are yeah. your uh, your honey gay cashews and salt. No, no, and no, salt. no but over, yeah. over, just over, keep over, going when you see those o over uh, to the right. nut clusters. Though, just keep going. Oh yeah, no, I I pass those. those I used to buy them, but I'm dangerous, done. man. Well, wait a minute. Yeah, if you went down further, you, you had the, you had the regular cashews. Oh, I get I get. Well, I get those. Yeah. Yeah, the Kirkland, I mean, the Kirkland brand stuff is a good deal. It's way cheaper. And it's usually made by the people who make the stuff that has a name The, the stuff it. that's more expensive next yeah. to it. Yeah. How, like, how can an almond saw, be any I, I different? On, oh, that, now there is the, I think that's the cashews, right? You just, oh, yeah. You, yeah. How much are those? Yeah. How much of those were uh, you? Twenty twenty dollars and Ooh, 79 that's cents. That's more expensive than my cashews. It's got, they've gone I just, up. I just oh, read the man. cashews are not a nut; they're a bean. Uh, okay, okay, they're okay, fruit. Well, well, if, they're if nothing fruit. more, cashews? folks, you got something out a of fruit. You, you no, got I, some, I think they're I a think bean. They're fruit. By the way, if you just joined us, our friend uh, uh, Ray is going. Uh, mix through, it, mix he's, it. he's going through Costco. What? What do you show us? What you've got in your basket so far? Okay, we got. We have. He's we got have samples from. Nuts. Yeah. <laughs> we have a we have a box of croissants that my wife wanted. Yeah. Because she's French. We have some salmon. Yeah. We have some pita chips. We have oh, this is the deal. A bag of avocados. Oh yeah. Okay. Those are good. Yeah. They're like five bucks and you get like one, two, three, four, five, six and, avocados. And I might for add five bucks. low in carbs. They're very good for you. High in High yumminess. In good fat. Yeah. Good Mandarin, fat. oranges, almonds. And uh, berries, yeah, tomatoes. That's it so far, man. Yeah. Well, you know but. what I do. What I do is I have uh, we have uh, uh, what do you call it? Alexa. 
And so yeah. anytime she wants something, you know, we want to remember to pick something up. We simply say, Alexa, put, you know, almonds on our shopping list. And then when I get to Costco, I go to my Alexa app on my phone and I've got all the things that she wanted for the week. And I, it's, I know. I and, should and, do that and I don't do it. But then I do it and I get apoplectic because all of a sudden she's put everything on there that's heavy. You know, box of soda. Yeah. I need some uh, giant all, you know, because like the soap there, you get a hernia just lifting. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah. You yeah. remember the days when you bought soap and it had a towel in it? Y yeah. You know, or, yeah. or that was a hell of a long time I, ago. I think there were dishes sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. Oh, no, you I don't. wonder if there was any soap in there. You know, you, yeah. you, you should have just bought the towel. Yeah. <laughs> but, it's, uh, you know, Costco's, uh, I, I, I think, uh, I, the trouble is, though, how many people in your family, Ray? You, your wife? Uh, four. Four. So when you yeah. shop at Costco, it's reasonable because you're shopping for four people. But we've only got right. two people here, so if we buy steaks and there are four there, and then we, we never get to the fourth one, you know? Oh, yeah, you know, know. So, so really, it's for people who have have families and stuff like that. In our case, so we waste a lot of money, throw away a lot I, of food. I use a yeah. seal a meal, and with the seal a meal thing, uh, it, it keeps the steak fresh. No, no, uh, eight, you know, no air gets into it yep. uh, for weeks. And, uh, and um, it's just like you took, yeah, months. It's like you just took it out of the package. Th you don't even have to freeze it. Thanks for the free ad and phone now so you don't forget. Right. Yeah. I call them suck and seal. Yeah, well, you know, you're sitting here, you've been complaining for five years that you buy at Costco and your shit goes bad. Well, get a seal a meal and you won't have that problem. You know what goes bad really fast that I've been uh, upset by? I buy some strawberries. I take them home. They're fresh. Two days later, they're not fresh anymore. Oh, the seal yeah. meal comes with a plastic canister and a little hose that you plug in. You can put the strawberries we're, we're, in we're, it. Well, yeah, but it, the, the, it, I don't think they would last. I don't know. There's something. They, I think they, they last. Just, no, I think they, they, they sell them just as they're ripening, you know? And then. Okay, like, I got, I, you partially freeze them and then you suck and seal them. Really? Okay, this is for Alex, just so he I got something from last year still. Oh, we, we wow. don't. Ha oh, we don't have that kind. I, uh, I have. Look to... at her. That's a sexy depends lady. Oh, really? Okay. Well, <laughs> and look at this guy, man. You know, it's funny. Hey, going on? My my depends don't look like that. <laughs> Neither does <laughs> your package. <laughs> actually, is... I'm. Uh, Wait, yeah. it's actually, it's under. That's depend. So that's uh, not, those well, aren't depends. Those are underwear. I guess probably the same company. Where's the damn depends? Oh, but wait a minute, but those are for, like, here's the thing. I, I, I shouldn't tell the story, but um, a couple of, about, I don't know, several months ago, for some reason, I can't remember what precipitated it, but all of a sudden, Marjorie started leaking. Ugh. And so we had it to happened. buy the Depends for her or something like it. It was some, some woman's version of it. And I kept saying, see all that joking about me? And who has to wear them first? But well, I'm here to I announce. Let me just he went past the let me uh, just, always. Wait a, minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let yeah. me just announce oh, yeah, this. Always, yeah. Because I want to be able to live with her when she gets home. She doesn't need them any longer. It was just a temporary thing that was happening. Could have been an infection uh, or something. Uh, you're dust now, Alex. You Don't forget yeah. about it. You're dust. Y yeah, well. But I've gone, <laughs> I've gone from the full-fledged Depends to the Always Pads. Now, they're for women, but they work. And you uh, use those? Yeah. You're not supposed uh, to use them. That's for women. I'm going to call the Me Now, Me Too movement. <laughs> Me too, right? You, you well, know. you know, after the prostatectomy, uh, there, there's uh, you know there's some leakage, and uh, it's getting much better. It's yeah. not anywhere near what it used to be, but yeah. well, let's see. I got to figure hey, this shit out, so to speak. Oh, gee, look what uh, I, look what I just found in my pocket. Wait a minute. Let me turn the camera on. Let's see. So that the uh, <laughs> audience can see it as well. Uh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> nice. Parking pass? No, no, no. It's oh. my my. Uh, they, I said, Not do I have to put it on me? And, and they said, yeah, really? No, no, you don't have to put it on. You just keep it with oh. you in case we need it. So there was my. Thanks for showing the entry. So you got your one pass in then, huh? Huh? You know, yeah. I, yeah, I listened to your friend's show on Sunday, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there was a guy on there, 
uh, remarkably uh, sounded like, you know, your friend sounds just like you, but he's not as good. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I got to compliment you. I didn't get to hear the show live, but I listened to the replay, and you sounded great, Alex. You sounded excellent. Yeah, well, I think so. Like you didn't skip yeah. a beat. No. Yeah. No, you were you you were great, and it was uh, you were really in the zone, and uh, you uh, you sounded like you were on cloud nine. Yeah, you sounded like yeah. you were having a damn good time. Well, I was. You didn't actually. sound any different to me than you did thirty years ago. Exactly. Honestly. Actually, you were better. Honestly, yeah, uh, well, I think you were better too. Yeah, it could be. You know, I mean, with age comes. Uh, Great responsibility. And, and I'm not going to call you that you sounded like the P word. Yeah, and you know, the, the bre- when you had the breaks and the and you had to get on and off the phone and stuff like that, Yeah, you uh, you, uh, you were you had perfect timing, you know? Yeah, it was like well, you just stopped doing smooth. it yesterday. I have right. to, yeah, I, like I, well, I have to tell you a little something. I had a woman by the name of Elena, who yeah. is the board uh, operator, uh, operator down there. I, I don't use her last name. Uh, because then everybody will suddenly ask questions. Uh, but her last name, her name is Elena Karmazin, and her third cousin, one of the biggest people in, in radio, Mel Karmazin. But anyway, she works there, and she's a board, the board person, and she led me through everything. I mean, she, when we come back from a break, she'd say, okay, we got, we got about 10 seconds. I'm opening your mic now, so I knew the mic was live, you know. Uh, she would then going into those, those what we call hard, hard breaks, which were on the half hours. Uh, she would start playing the music, and then she'd say, 10 seconds," and then uh, I would start wrapping it up. And I took it, you know, I took it just right. She said, "Okay, finish it up now," you know. So I mean, she was perfect, and that's why I sounded so good. It's all because of Elena. Yeah, yeah. It, it sounded great. So, uh, yeah, but 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 you're so good. You were really good at you know at the hard breaks and cut and stopping people in a way that was smooth. And, and I mean that's not easy to do for everybody. Yeah, and it was like you just stopped doing it yesterday. Yeah, I mean there was no there was no yeah. difference. Well, there were, you yeah. were you, you were just like a total pro. <laughs> well, no, I, didn't I didn't say, say it. it. I didn't <laughs> say it. <laughs> I was, well, you've been doing it this for fill. a long time. You know, I mean, you're seasoned. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, yeah th- that isn't it as much as that doing this is different than doing, doing that is different than doing this, okay? Uh, in that, um, it, it's just a whole different set of, of things. To begin with, the har- one of the hardest parts for me was we go to a commercial break, and all those commercial breaks were five minutes long. Wow. All right? <laughs> Uh, and uh, when I went into in one of the commercial breaks, actually, we went to the weather first, then into the commercial break, and there was about eight minutes there with not, me not being on. And so to keep your, what can we call it, keep, keep your, your, the thing going your in your mind open. so when you come back, you're, you have, you know, it just sounds like you left off, right? Well, I heard is, that is, when is they it? had me on hold uh, yeah. for uh, when I called in. Yeah. And and uh, I could hear the I could hear the show, and then I could hear that music uh, when they went to commercial. Well, during no, when they went to commercial, the local commercials, they play this music. Some some of the local commercials I heard. Yeah. But uh, uh, many times uh, I heard that music, and I heard some dead air for a while. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Dead air. Yeah. Uh, if the music you hear is they they send music down the line when they go to a break for the station so they just know there's something there and you know and i and i told her i said who picked this music she said walter did i said tell him he's got to change it this is like being on hold you know with uh microsoft or somebody like that who just keeps playing the same song over and over and over again uh, it was horrible <laughs> well but yeah nobody hears that that doesn't even get on the air but yeah you now uh, the yeah. only reason ray and i heard it is because we called in but you know, yeah. I mean, the hard part was I, I haven't done, I haven't been in a studio in five years. You know, it was a nice studio. You showed me pictures. I sent, I called you on uh, Facebook. Yeah, yeah FaceTime. Yeah, it yeah. was FaceTime. That no, wasn't a nice studio, but it wasn't a bad studio. He told me it was dingy. He told you it was a closet. <laughs> yeah, it was a real studio. It, no, it was a real studio. Yeah, there. In fact, there were three microphones in there if I wanted to have guests in the studio with me. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
but uh, the only the only disconcerting thing is your Ooh. your your uh, producer engineer is in Philadelphia, and so's your phone screener. And I had a screen there that was telling me who was on the various lines. Yeah. Uh, that comes down off the internet. Uh, luckily, I took my iPad with me because he I, he didn't take, tell me to take my iPad with me. So I'm glad I did because I had it there. But I could have seen I could have seen it on my phone, you know, whatever. So. Uh, could you have skyped with your phone screener so that uh, you could have a more uh, more personal kind of connection? I don't think they're set up for that. You know. Well, they could have done it on their phone or something. No, they, but there's no need to. Why do I need to see? Uh. Well, this way you can see them, and it why might do, give you that why do, personal experience you were looking well, for. Well, yeah, but you know something? The first minute that I was there, uh, you might turn your mic off there, Ray, okay. when you're not on because yeah. people talking behind yeah. you and everything. Uh, 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 when I first got there, I sat down in, at, the, uh, at the table, and all of a sudden I hear through the earphones. I haven't got the earphones on, but I hear coming through the earphones somebody going, Hello, Alex, are you there? And I pick up the earphones, put them on my head, and it's Elena. And it's like she's in the, in the control room next to me. I mean, that's how clear the sound was. Wow. So I, I, I knew at that precise moment that this was going to go okay. You know, this wasn't going to be difficult. And, yeah. uh, you know. When I answered phones for you at Camel, there was a small studio between us, but I was in a, in a studio. Mm -hmm. You were in the w front one at mm -hmm. where the big windows were, but mm -hmm. there was a smaller studio in between. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, you know, I could see you, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, I, I didn't like talking on that uh, on the monitor thing. Well, I used yeah, to just well, signal well, this, you with line is, to pick up. Th this was a, I, I think it's an ISDN line they used. Mm -hmm. And it was just clear as a bell. You know, I mean, just like she was right there. I mean, it was wonderful. And, and it, it all, you know, it couldn't have gone nicer. It was a nice experience for me. And I dreaded every moment of it, you know. I know you did. Uh, I thought that this was going to be just a clusterfuck. And it wasn't. It, it you yeah. know. Um, the only thing that I hate about it is the postpartum depression that I've been facing. And that is, here, there I was for three hours doing the, what I love best, which is radio, terrestrial radio, and not only terrestrial radio, but national terrestrial radio over about 52, 53 stations. And uh, after it was over, hey, you know, when's the next time that's going to happen? Hey, yeah. when you, you called me after the show and you sounded like you were walking on a cloud, you, you, were, you were so high uh, and so happy it was it was it was great seeing that yeah and uh, you know hopefully you just remember that feeling and and bring it back to yourself and anytime you want to go back to that place well now, rather than now be I, you depressed. Know, I, I, I never in the last five years haven't said gee I wish I have a terrestrial radio show but I I forgot how much I love doing it you know and yeah. uh, so to have me do that the other day and then not do it next week or the week afterwards or whatever. It's kind of like feeding a, a poor person a steak and saying that's all you're ever going to get, you know. Uh, I don't know. That isn't the last time I'll ever be in a radio studio, you know. I mean, you, uh, Walter might ask me back, uh, you know, unless I did too well, you know. You, so. you might find when they need a fill-in, uh, there'll be somebody around there that will have you fill in for other shows and other people. I have no idea. I don't think it's going to amount to anything, you know. And uh, uh, you, you could do a follow-up call, Alex. You know, like call them and just say, "Hey, I really enjoyed doing your show. My friends, uh, you know, well, said I, it was well, great to you hear you know, again." You, don't, you, don't, you know, you just don't know what you're talking about, John. This happens to be uh, a, no, a, it, a guy is a friend of mine. Uh, so this, I, yeah. this guy has gotten him more jobs than uh, than this. Oh, I mean, okay, all right. Then he hasn't he gotten you positions at other stations? Didn't he, he get you he Camel? Got, he, no, he, no, 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 no. Who got you Camel? Uh, that it was, was a uh, guy by the name of Larry Yurden. <laughs> oh, it was it was a consultant though? Right? He, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. He knew where the bodies were buried. That was his yeah. claim to fame. No, this okay, guy. He's headed he, for the checkout. Uh, uh, let's uh, let's uh, see his card. I want to everybody guess. See how much he's got in his card. Uh, 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 one hundred and seventy dollars. Okay. okay, let's no, see. I think he's got. Let's see your card. Two sixty-five. Right, let's see your oh. cart uh, there, Ray. Ray, let me see your cart. Okay. What, what's he got in there? I'm saying that's a uh, hundred and. Uh, 
Uh, 150. Well, how, how much, much meat how, you got? How in much there? meat in there? Uh, no, uh, just some salmon. Okay. One, one salmon. Okay. Sorry. I'm saying. Oh, shit, I'm, I'm saying getting 100, in trouble. I'm getting in trouble. I'm too slow. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, are you going to get the Costco hot dog? Hell no. <laughs> oh, because if you got the Costco hot dog, I'd say 165. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, at Stu <laughs> Leonard's, say he's gonna hit 200. At Stu Leonard's up here, uh, uh, up north here, if you uh, if you p spend a hundred dollars, they give you a free ice cream cone. Brian, what are you dangling around there, man? That's some kind of weird thing. Yeah, just a pencil. Once I have it, I've had it since I was in the second grade. Yeah, he likes pencils. Yeah, you got a lot of produce there. Uh, you're probably not at 200. I, I'd say he's at 150 to 175. I'm. Oh, I agree. I mean, you can't have a range like that. I was 165. How can I, you know? How can you go to 170, 150 to 175? Then you steal my 165. You got to pick a number. This is. I'll not, go 180. I'm. I'm going. I'm going one. One sixty three fifty. There's all of it. There's all of it right there. What is it? One. <laughs> one. One seventy three. There's all of it. Uh, I'm saying yeah. I'm lowering my estimate. And then the Pellegrino in the cart. Uh, I'm saying 145. What do you think this is? Yeah, the price I'm gonna, right? I'm dropping down. No, why not? No. I'll go with the 180 bucks. Yeah. Okay. 165. Okay. 173.40. 135. <laughs> this is a great game to play, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's like isn't, like that show Supermarket a, Sweep here. Supermarket ago. Sweep, yeah. <laughs> I love those bad, uh, gap bucks that will be winning if one of us wins. It's amazing, you know, if there's a long line waiting to get out at Costco, how fast you get out. That line just oh, moves amazing. fishing. That's Except efficient. the person in front of me always yeah. has a coupon that, that isn't quite right. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's me. And, and you got to get the manager, you know. The, oh, the, oh, right. oh yeah. I was Thank telling you. you, this yeah. monitor blew on me, so I took it back to Costco where I bought it. They yeah. they dropped a hundred and what, what it was a hundred and ninety bucks in my pocket, you know. Okay, so what did it come oh. to? One seventy seven. One seventy seven. I was. I one said one seventy four forty. One seventy three forty. Uh, yeah, I originally my original estimate was about one seventy three fifty. I think. So I sure stuck with my one eighty. <laughs> I think stuck John with my one eighty. Yeah. I got it. So I get the Costco hot dog, right? No, no, you get to pick up the bill. <laughs> anyway, so then I went what to go get. I that? went. I went to go get another monitor, and they had it right there, but yep. they didn't have any boxes. They were all out of them. So I had to order from Costco online to get that price. What do you mean? Uh, they took the box? Uh, they didn't for the, have the box for the monitor? No. And the monitor they had, they would have sold me, but it was broken. Oh. Yeah. So then hey, I... Alex, so is yours. Yeah. Hey, Alex, did, did that show <laughs> uh, save a podcast? I'm doing okay, show? thanks. Because I you. missed... I mean, I'll send they, it to you. I have yeah. it. Well, you don't you have, have to... The you, know, you can go to... Uh, you can go to uh, 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 Walter I'll M. Just, send it to him. just go online to Walter M. Sterling, uh, and uh, on his site are uh, are all podcasts of his shows, without the commercial breaks. And um, uh, you can always just go to my Facebook page. I have it posted there. You oh. just click on it, okay. and it'll take okay. you there. All right. Why am I telling you to have to do all that? Just go to my Facebook page, and you'll see. Uh, yeah, I'll download it because I listen to podcasts at work. You know, well, this, it's a, I don't think you can download this. I, oh, I yeah, there's understand. ways to do it. If it's online, you can, yeah. you know, Just stream it. Well, I, yeah. I simply ran a, I ran my Adobe Audio here and just recorded it as it played. So, yeah, you could do that. Yeah. So how did you, how did you, do, how did you do it, Phil? I went to the uh, website, uh, uh, your friend's, uh, the Sterling website, yeah, and uh, I um, copied it, pasted it, and I sent it to you on your message, messenger. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I, I I didn't think. And I just I just sent it to uh, John. Hello to oh, uh, hello messenger. hello to. Or you could just take a audio out from your computer and put it in a Zoom or something like this, and just Zoom. Make your Who own has own a eye. Zoom anymore? Yeah, I got a Zoom H6. Or is it yeah, this is a this is a good unit. Yeah. Um, anyway, hello Patrick, how are you? I am super fabulous. Good for you. Oh, look, it's it's the trip to the car in the parking lot. 
That, you yeah. know, uh, that's the diesel going back. Now, here's the thing I wondered. I was thinking yeah. this today. Uh, I did a show on Saturday, Sunday night, three hours, went out to, I think, 52, 53 stations in the United States and Guam. Okay, it was on at 3 in the afternoon in Guam. Uh, and uh, live everywhere, wherever it was. And when it came to getting calls, I got calls from Patrick, and I got calls from uh, Ray, and I got call. Who else did I get calls from? I called you. Yeah, you know, I know Ray uh, called me. Uh, uh, Renee, Renee called, called me. You. Renee called. And then I had a bunch of other people who called as well, who were just listeners. Yeah. yeah. But if, absent my callers, there wouldn't be have been a lot of callers. And I was just thinking to myself, I sit here and I go, oh, I only got a couple of hundred people listening to me right now. Uh, boy, this is not worth doing. I'm wondering realistically, out of all those stations, how many people were actually listening to that show? The one guy that said when you said you were a lefty, mm -hmm. he thought you were talking about left-handed people. Oh, I see. And he says, I <laughs> 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 and most of the people that called didn't have a real telephone. You know, uh, they they you still use pay phones. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, what's Facebook? What's uh, Twitter? Uh, <laughs> I don't have a cell phone. I don't have a TV. No, but I wonder. I wonder realistically, and I've always wondered this realistically. How many people are listening? Just because it's going out nationally doesn't mean I have more listeners listening to me on Saturday Sunday night than listen to me right now with this podcast over a given day. Hey, yeah. you know, Alex, I think that, like, on KGO even now, mm -hmm. uh, I noticed that the hosts sometimes are really stalling because I think they don't have any callers. Yeah. yeah. Seriously. I'll, well, I think that's your, I think you're right about that. Uh, I, yeah. I have sat there. Uh, I asked, uh, well, I asked uh, uh, Albert about this once because he worked with Rush Limbaugh. And I said, Rush Limbaugh, the most popular guy on talk radio, right? I said... Well, how many calls did he get on his show? He said some days he was sitting there and there wasn't a line ringing. There you go. You know? So, I mean, I get, but all I'm thinking about is, like, uh, how many people realistically were listening to me? I mean, I'd you like to a, think there were thousands upon thousands, but it could have been in the hundreds. You give away something or you yeah. have some sort of contest, then you get people calling. No, but then, you know, the 25th caller will get the T-shirt. No, but you know? you, you, you're getting an artificial count that way because what's happening is people are dialing, double dialing, doing all of that, you know. Uh, and plus, I hate <clears throat> contests. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've got a, a stream going on September 8th. Uh, I'm going to be working uh, w on radio with uh, KPFA. Uh, live streaming the climate march down Market Street. Well, I know we have and more listeners in KPFA, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but see, the 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 uh, video component of it does record uh, hits and viewers and so, things like that. So we might actually get uh, a read, uh, you know, on how many people are watching it. I I've done KPFA things where I've had 800 people watching the stream. You know, I, uh, we covered a uh, uh, Shell No campaign where we shut down the Polar Pioneer uh, on the docks in Seattle about three years ago and got 800 viewers, uh, you know, on, on the KPFA video stream. So, mm -hmm. Well, that's very good. Thank you. Uh, it wasn't, what I, when, wasn't really what I was talking about, but, you know, you got your plug in. No, I, uh, uh, no, I got my plug, but, I, I mean, the point is, is if you uh, combine uh, video well, with audio, then sometimes you get a read also, on Also, uh, I think I, I, mentioned, I mentioned Gabnet quite often on the show. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so I expected that maybe I would see a tick upward in viewership or listenership. Nothing. So I'm suspecting nobody listens. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe they listen to it on the recorded podcast. You know, just because it's uh, you know it's a, a ten o'clock your time uh, kind of thing. Uh, they, there is a there is a recorded element of it, and there, you, I guess there are people that you, listen to you, the show. But do you really think that people who yeah. listen to talk radio, which is an old Altakaka group, really know well, how, is it ever. How, how to get a podcast? <laughs> you know, 
you know. They think a pod, I, podcast is something that happens when you throw a tide, a tide most, pod. Most of those people were still using rabbit ears, they called. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But, you know, I, I, but I, again, I just wonder, <laughs> uh, realistically, you know, how many people, and I, and I think I wondered this when I was doing uh, stuff over at WOR, and I was doing Lionel's show, and it went out on the network. Uh, and I just I wondered, you know, really realistically, how many people are listening? Uh, we never knew it at at uh, at uh, Sirius XM. You know, I could have had tens of thousands of people, or I could have had five. You know, I didn't know. There was no way. Well, I'm family. I'm going to listen to your show on podcast because I can't always be there on a scheduled time. A lot of people are like that's the internet has changed that. I so, just sent it to you. Uh, no, no, yeah, but, thanks. I, I'm going to listen yeah, to the but, show. Yeah, but that's the and, way you listen to it. What I'm saying is this thing goes huh. out to nothing but a bunch of right-wing radio stations across the <laughs> United States with nothing with with an audience that is hitting, uh, you know, dying off slowly but surely because they're so old. 72 and, and, I've been told is the average age of the listener what? in this program. What did you say? 71 or 72 years of age, I've heard through multiple sources, is the average age of your typical talk radio listener. Also, your typical Fox News viewer. I maybe I, I, I don't know about that. Uh, you know, you may be right. I don't think it's that high, though. I think it's somewhere in the 50s. Okay. Or perhaps in the low 60s, but nevertheless. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, and, and these people don't say, hey, you know, if I don't catch this show now, there'll be a podcast tomorrow. Like, I had this one woman, Linda, who called. And she yeah. used to call me all the time when I did Lionel. She used to call me. And uh, she doesn't own a television set. Oh, I know. can't say I blame her. Well, I know there's, there's an aesthetic joy in that. But the fact is that that's how much she is not wired in. Okay. Yeah. Or a cynical component. Yeah. Other than a, a, uh, aesthetic joy or a cynical component. Yeah. Yes, term. Patrick things are would she be on par with bubbles then no, no but bubbles uh, is even uh, uh, worse <laughs> bubbles has a phone he also has a tv <laughs> set too but i bet oh. it, i bet it's got a tube in it i'll bet you i haven't asked him but i bet you it's got a tube in it well <laughs> alex the reason i was flashing this is because i think you ought to advertise on aarp i mean it's a it's an amazing a resource, you know, a lot of people uh, why, would. Uh, why, why, why would I advertise? And secondly, well, how, how can I afford to advertise? If it doesn't get me anything, if it doesn't get me anything that's going to bring me money back in, then why advertise? I can, can you you could get a you could get a uh, some kind of uh, benefit from ARP, wouldn't they? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ar you know? ARP, I'm sure, has a senior discount for advertising. Hey, yeah. I, I have been resisting joining AARP. I don't want to admit that I'm over, what is it, 50 or something? That they 55, start asking, I think. Yeah. yeah, they start yeah. asking you to join. I had, they can't be able to say stuff. No, I had a card when I was 45. My business manager made me get it. He said there are a lot of good deals you can get with yes. it. You know. Yes. Oh, are there? Yeah. yeah. What kind of good deals? Just uh, offers and things like that. Uh, uh, to begin with, pretty soon uh, you're going to be uh, getting Medicare and there's 20% uh, that Medicare doesn't take care of, and you have to have supplemental, and ARP has su ARP supplemental. I just so thought of something. Yeah. This is this got to do with the Mac Mini. You bought it with a credit card. And if you use the credit card and the thing blew up, you can. Uh, the credit card company has insurance for that. You can call your Visa, MasterCard, whatever it was, and... Uh, uh, they they may have they have coverage. I once bought my girlfriend a, a bracelet and she lost it, mm -hmm. and uh, American Express covered it. Uh, well, the question and I know is, that Visa look, and Mastercard look, 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 have I bought, the same thing. I bought this thing from you for three hundred bucks, but the retail cost of it is about thirteen fifty, right? Right. But at least so, you can get your three hundred bucks back. Do I do I claim the three hundred or do I claim thirteen <laughs> fifty? I, 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 I don't have know. To think you have to claim the bracelet. I don't yeah, know if they if cover a personal purchase. To and from two people, though. No, no, no. But my thing is, uh, for it's a business. Really? Uh, so try it. Just call the credit card company. Oh, you mean the, and tell you them, bought the uh, you bought the mini from the carpet place. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, he, I used my square for my uh, photo. Uh, you know, if, uh, oh, somebody. Okay. You know, if I do a, a photo yeah, shoot yeah, yeah. or something that I actually yeah. get paid for. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I could well, check maybe, with them maybe. and say, hey, I bought this using a credit card from a person who sold it to me who has a business. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I think I used the uh, used uh, the visa, didn't I? Right. Worth so a try. Call, visa, call Visa and see if it's covered. Worth a try. Yeah, well, I mean. American Express covers a lot. Well, yeah, but he used to be, and Visa well, has that first, insurance. First, first I got and it doesn't it doesn't go against the merchant, you know, uh, yeah. and it's it's just an insurance. It's well, one. First, you're talking about the benefits of AARP, and it, and it triggered that your yeah, credit card has maybe, a benefit. Maybe I I the, the, the first I got to find out what's wrong with it. If it's something that's fixable, like a power supply, it's only like about one hundred and fifty dollars to replace. You know. Yeah. Uh, but if it's not, you know, I have another place in town that fixes these things and says they don't replace the logic board; they fix it. You know? Really? Yeah. And they say it, don't go, it, don't go anywhere else. They'll try and sell you a logic board, and that includes Apple. You know, mm. uh, come to us; we'll we'll dig into it and we'll fix it. But it may not be the logic board. It could be the the f a fuse or something blew right. when the thing blew, and. Uh, you know, the fan still works, and the light still goes on the front, but nothing else works. And it could be the power supply, and it could be the those things are just, you know, hard uh, power supply went on my Hewlett Packard old scanner downstairs. I actually bought a used one I was telling check on eBay, and I was able to swap it out and get it to work. But that lightning storm got me you know, a couple of weeks ago, I think, when it went, because it was working fine, and it just wouldn't work. I actually did just you, got it. I bought one used yeah. and I used it for Wait a time. minute. Did you have your super check the socket in case you ever plug something back in to that socket? Well, I tested it. It was fine. No, no, I'm talking Alex. Alex, no, socket. No, no, no. Uh, that, that socket has a surge protector on it. Uh, yeah, but the surge protector, you had both the mini and the screen the monitor plugged into the surge protector. No, you no, purged no, you, no, no. You put no, the surge no, protector no, no, into no, the socket. No, no, I simply unplugged the mini and plugged it into that and then when the mini went the mini was attached to the monitor via uh its uh you know hdmi cable i see okay and that so, probably caused the chain reaction that blew both of them oh and the other the the monitor had the same situation the, the monitor light is on okay uh -huh. but it doesn't turn on <laughs> you know so uh, something I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? I screwed up basically. You know, uh, it was all working. How could you screw up? I just plug in an well, into I a may, strip. I may have actually unplugged it and plugged it, it unplugged the the strip and put it in the socket directly. I don't know, but in any That's event, what I did. it was working. I and then I it. pulled it out and put it in the socket because I was trying. What happened was, one of my monitors wasn't working, and I couldn't figure out why. And I. I was trying everything, and finally I, I was pulling this stuff in and out, and it turns out that my cleaning woman had accidentally knocked the plug out of another strip, okay? Uh, and, but th th that was too late. I had already tried replugging this stuff in elsewhere, and at one point, a b giant spark came out of the back of the Mac Mini. Ooh, oh, oh, ow, oh, ow. Oh. So, yeah. uh, but I'm thinking. Is that the one that you bought from Phil? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking. I bet she gave you a defector. No, you know, God punishes. I'm you joking. yelled, at, you yelled at me the other night, and and God punishes. <laughs> what, what did he yell at you for? It's probably uh, yeah, Trump, something about Trump, right? Uh, oh, did him. you hear what she said, Alex? The, the prostitute? Uh, don't change the subject. Said he only lasted two minutes, she told me. We came back from the hospital. <laughs> she said that Ramona said that the, the prostitute said that Trump is terrible. Who, who was a prostitute? That that uh, who's that lady? Stormy, Stormy Daniels. She's not. No, a, she's not a. She's not, she's she's not, a, she's she's not a, prostitute. a prostitute. Same thing. She gets paid for sex. Take it back. No, it's she, different. She gets paid for being on filmed. TV. She gets paid for being filmed. She doesn't get paid oh, for she, sex. She's getting confused. Then. And is she having? Uh, it's the same thing. She gets paid well, to be photographed like having sex. Yes, she but she Trump doesn't Trump. get paid for having sex. Well, if she didn't have sex, she wouldn't get paid. <laughs> she's a prostitute. <laughs> she doesn't know what she's talking about. Let me tell Whether it's on film or not. No, I will. I will defend. I will defend a a porn actress as not being a prostitute. You know. Yeah. Uh, okay. To begin with, a, pro uh, a porn actress does have her choice of who she has sex with. Yeah, the person who pays. A prostitute takes on all comers. 
so to speak. Uh, <laughs> well, that's the money shot. Well, he's not forced to. What? The prostitute is not forced to take on all comers. Well, yeah, but if you're running a business like that, you better. You know. Um, it sounds like we're splitting cunt hairs here. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I can't remember Dennis Hoff at the Moonlight Bunny Ranch ever saying the name of his women turned down guys. You know. So, unless they had been with him before and they had been aggressive or, you know, a problem. And then he wouldn't even let them in the door. Uh, no, but anyway, fair. so anyway. Uh, uh, get, get, he has more credibility to me than Trump does. And I'm not surprised. I'm assuming that's Tony that's uh, talking. That was talking. Way, he's a Republican not, and he supports Trump. Is, Where's Scott yeah. Boddicker? Where is Ooh. he? Uh, what happened to Scott? Uh, he, uh, he, he walked away from his chair. Oh, okay. Because I want to. In Renati's off. Renati went yeah. went off. Yeah. yeah, he's driving now. Um, uh, but uh, come on, hey, not be like me. You can you can talk and drive. Yeah, but, uh, but, but anyway. like so that some big fucker doesn't pull you over. So anyway, so I think you know I, I think I did a good job the other night. I, I was very happy with it when I left. Uh, An asshole. Uh, you know. So yeah. yes, yes, Jeff. Yeah. I, I thought I thought it was very good, and and you know what? It was a little different. Than the way you um, communicate today uh, mm -hmm. in this show. What? Well, it's a it's a slightly different kind of yeah. communication. I know, but it was also it was not it was also different than let's say your previous stuff for five years ago. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how why it would be necessarily, except that I have aged in five years. No, I don't think it was so much the age. I th it was the demeanor. Okay. Not, not your voice. Well, it wasn't his show. It was somebody else's, and he was yeah. filling in. That could be if the reason. If it was my show, I probably would have been a little more... Uh, well, to begin with, if I had, it was my own show, I would have been doing it for several... for a lot of time before, by the time you heard it. And um, uh, I would be doing it my way. You know, I, I, in in guest hosting for somebody, you're really taking going into somebody else's home, and you don't want to rearrange the furniture too much. You know, you want to do enough to make yourself comfortable, but you don't want to really, you know, screw up his his show and his audience. Did you hear it at all, Scott? Did you get a chance to hear it at all? Wait a minute, your mic isn't on. Yeah, I heard yeah. it. I, I yeah. actually uh, the only thing I didn't like is I didn't like the commercials because I would, I would I was watching TV during the commercials and I fell fell asleep when the TV was on and I I don't know. So yeah, well, did, I heard it, some it, of it. Did you feel a desire to buy scented candles? I want the San Francisco one, the poop scent. Uh, is there a poop you, scent? Well, they had a one for San Francisco. You know, uh, and uh, I figured the scent of poop is the uh, is the thing that, that makes you feel at home in San Francisco. Yeah, well, I thought that, that would have been for New Jersey, though. That's how that, that that's how Walter makes some money out of that show, and that's off those live reads that he does. That's his yeah. his read. So anyway, I think Pennsylvania would be cow shit. If, <laughs> I got a couple items here uh, you might be interested in. Woody Allen. Ooh. He's going to reportedly do what he hasn't done since 1981. Take a and, hit. And go at least one calendar year without making a movie. Uh, the New York Post, page six, reports the four-time Oscar winner's 48th feature film. Wow. A rainy day in New York, wrapped in November, and is set to be released by Amazon later this year. After that, Alan apparently has nothing on the horizon until an untitled project due in 2020. Whether the upcoming break is Alan's idea isn't entirely clear. The report cites sources saying that Alan has not secured financing for the 2020 project. However, the report notes that Amazon has a deal with Alan that leaves Amazon on the hook for three more films. The Post also notes that earlier this year, The Hollywood Reporter said that Amazon may decide to break the deal even if it does mean a hefty payout, that's because of the stuff about uh, uh, it Me says too. Woody loves working, never takes a vacation, but he'll be taking a year off uh, until he can find a backer. 
The Post adds the Me Too movement, ironically spearheaded by his son Ronan Farrow, has hurt the auteur, who was accused by his adopted daughter Dylan Farrow of sexually abusing her 26 years ago. Allen has never formally been charged with the crime, although a judge in Allen's child custody case against Mia Farrow called Allen's behavior toward Dylan grossly inappropriate. So mm. it, 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 the, the Me Too stuff may have made it difficult for him to get financing, which I think would be terrible because I always look forward to his work. Even to this day, you know, the, not all his films are great, but he makes one a year, and once every two years or so or three years, he's got a film that's really terrific, and I look forward to those. Yes, uh, 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 Brian. Brian. If I haven't made this clear before, I'll make it clear now. I'm get I, I too am getting tired of this Me Too bullshit. Here's the as far as you know ending careers prematurely, and I'm including Kevin Spacey in this. Unless you're due to be put behind bars, unless you're doing the perp walk and set to be doing time, don't fucking disrupt the apple cart. I mean, take for example House of Cards. How many people are potentially uh, have potentially or could potentially lose their jobs, and you know. And all the crew could, you know, well, go they, through a. They uh, are. They are. They, they because are because of they're stopping something he wasn't in prison for. They're stopping the show after this season, which he's not in. But you know, think of what. Ha- well, think of what happened with Roseanne's show. Think of how many people too. were out of work because of that. Although they're going to be working again, and John Goodman has announced that they will be coming back, and they're killing off Roseanne. <gasps> which I think they're going to they're going to use what we were talking about. The last episode of Roseanne, she was going to the hospital for an operation for her knee. I think she's going to die on the operating table. Oh my god! Uh, John Goodman. Uh, two things. One is that John Goodman actually made a positive statement about Roseanne, saying she wasn't a racist. And uh, uh, what was the uh, the other thing? Oh, Louis C.K. Well, uh, I mean, did no, a stand-up set. I was going to I was going to get to that oh, later. Uh, so. All right. Sorry. Well, we can get to it now. He did a he did a stand-up at uh, the the uh, comedy place where he. That he show that he showcases in the TV show that he was doing, the Comedy Cellar. And, Goodman, huh? No, no, uh, Louis C.K. Louis C.K. Louis. Oh yeah, okay. Um, he um, uh, he appeared around 11 a.m. Said Noam Dwarman, owner of the Cellar, the Greenwich Village Club, with a long tradition of surprise appearances by famous comedians. But also the Comedy Cellar is the the comedy club that he goes down into at the beginning of every show of Louie and that's where he does all his stand up on the show uh, uh, dressed in a black V neck t-shirt and gray pants he did 15 minutes a set that touched on what Mr. Warman called typical Louis C.K. stuff, racism, waitresses tips and parades the report quotes Warman as saying it sounded like he was trying to work out some new material almost like any time of the last in the last ten years that he would come in at the uh, at the at the beginning of a new act, what I read about though was this uh, owner uh, <coughs> su- supposedly didn't didn't know that he was going on down there, but apparently he was there according to this story. He didn't mention or address the sexual allegations, uh, and uh, previously the comedian said the allegations first reported in the New York Times were true. The Times adds Mr. Dwarman said C.K. was very relaxed and the audience sold out crowd of about 115 greeted him warmly with an ovation even before he began. Uh, Mr. Dwarman was at home asleep but the club staff texted him about the appearance and later watched a tape of it, he said. Now, that is what happened with Louis, Louis C.K. The aftermath online is why I hate Twitter and why I hate Facebook and why I hate the human race. Uh, because <laughs> immediately they're going, why should he be allowed to go back on stage? Fuck him. Fuck you. Now, here's the one really do the com- doing the complaining. Who do you think was was a big complainer on this? Anybody have an idea? Oh, let's see. Is it a person? Catholic priest. No, not Catholic priest. But it sounds like Catholic priests. Oh, sounds Asia like. Argento or whatever her name is. No. <laughs> Kathy Griffin. 
Wow. Oh, gee. Yeah. The Headless Horseman. Oh. I was going to say some cunt licker, but I guess that's about no mark. No, she, yeah. but but I, 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 I have known Kathy Griffin in the past, and she is a cunt. Uh, <laughs> he says, why. do you know how many talented women in POC comics are knocking on doors trying to get time in front of audiences or powerful people in this business, and Louie just gets to glide back in on his own terms? Gosh, does it pay off to be in the boys' club, the white boys' club? Oh, she fell for the white. Start your own thing. What's the the white? White? Like it's a big privilege. Brian said bullshit. Explain yourself, Brian. How, how long has he been hiding? I mean, how long has he been gone? Me? And she's been out there crying for how long? I didn't, I, I didn't say bullshit, by the way. I said, then start, I, meaning Kathy, start your own thing, get your own followers, and, you know, uh, I didn't say bullshit as far as... Uh, as, hey, as didn't she uh, 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 rip off uh, uh, underage children working on her g- garment clothes in no. El Salvador or Honduras or no, something? No, that wasn't her. Oh. I don't think she has any clothing lines. No, you're thinking about uh, Kathy... Uh, Kathy, Kathy Lee Gifford. Kathy yeah, Lee yeah. Gifford. A little difference yeah. there, uh, yeah. John. Um, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, her complaints, I mean, she went through a bad thing when she did that Trump head thing, you know, the bloody Trump oh, head. Yeah. And, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She that wasn't was hiding fault. off she in the background. Started. She was making noise the whole time she was coming back. Louis C.K., we haven't heard from him until now. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But you know something I got to tell you about her with the head? The thing that disappointed me about her is I would have been on her side, but she 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 apologized apologized, apologized. He came out and, and did it whimpered into the corner Trump. yeah yeah uh, and and i felt that that made me lose any respect i might have had for her but i never yeah. had respect for her in the first place it, yes somebody was saying something uh yes was, brian hey, real quick uh um my, my my take on i think i said this before when this just happened i was participating in this program when the kathy lee uh you know kathy griffin shit happened but anyway i'll say it again um what she should have what I would have done with my personality and her body, I would have said to uh, I would have said to Trump and to all the media outlets, not only am I not sorry for what I did, I demand an apology for Trump and you people for having wasted my valuable time hounding me in the first place. Well, you know, you they, say do, sorry to me, you, not the other way around. Do you know that the uh, Secret Service even paid a visit to her and were watching know. her, thinking she was dangerous? They cuff her. No. What do you want? No. There's a Secret Service agent shows up on my doorstep. I say, what? You want me to suck your dick? I don't give a fuck. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, uh, the the point is. And you just might. (laughs) Go out and chase some real folks. Go out and uh, hang it on the porch. (laughs) You know, so she went through a terrible thing in which, uh, you know, I would, I, in fact, uh, I said it at the time that I did not like Kathy Griffin, but I will defend what she did. She has the right to ply her art in any way she wants to ply it maybe maybe you consider it in bad taste but that's you know then don't listen to her right no No more so than the piss christ but i it's like the alex jones thing i defended her and and now i wouldn't defend her at all because of what she just said about louis ck what it has nothing to do with him being part of a boys club this to begin with that particular club owes him every favor they can give him because every week on the beginning of the Louis show for four seasons, you saw the comedy seller, you know? Uh, yes, uh, uh, Patrick. I think it has everything to do with talent. Yeah. But Kathy Lee has not. No, Kathy know. Griffin, not Kathy yeah. Lee. Kathy yeah. Lee. She, she has, uh, she's I, mean, I don't remember finding anything she's ever done funny. So, I mean, you know, and I, I can't be the only one. Right. Uh, you know, talent is talent, and, and if you don't have it, you don't have it. And, and unfortunately for her, Louie could walk into that place or glide in, as she said, and, and have a, a warm reception. Right. Take it every time. Right. she'd like talent in. Exactly. Yeah, but what she call the what she calling the boys club that yeah, supposedly boys. supported her, supported Louis C.K. was not supporting him. They all just they all abandoned him. Yeah. And then he just walks in and and then they all of a sudden support him. That sounds like somebody unzipped their fly. That was ten. Uh, you got ten. Yeah. That's my jacket. 
We have a full, full house. house. Full house. <laughs> full house. I should have a sign that blinks. Full house. Full house. Yeah. Hey, Brian, you've had your hand up so much. Uh, you know, Madam Zelda from Poughkeepsie is going to uh, call you and give you a palm reading. <laughs> uh, you can read from this. John has offered to take me to a Greenpeace function. I asked him if I should bring my cuffs, but then I figured out, you know what? They're probably going to get me arrested. <laughs> you know, there'll be some protest. <laughs> Now, well, let me give you one more story. This one, maybe you didn't hear about. because These are all the same story, really, between the thing with, uh, with Louis C.K. and the thing with Woody yeah. Allen. And now, Matt Lauer. <gasps> we got the boot from NBC's Today show in November over sexual harassment allegations. All this is allegations. That's what bothers me. But he was hanging out with his ex-wife, or his uh, soon-to-be ex-wife. Uh, well, that, um, that, has nothing, last week. that has nothing to do with the story. Uh, no, okay. You know, uh, it, the, the fact is that, that uh, Matt Lauer, uh, it, it's, again, it's allegations. Uh, the report says Lauer was overheard in his old haunt, Donahue's Steakhouse, telling fans he will be returning. Uh, the report quotes a source as saying a group of older ladies came over to Lauer saying, we miss you. And according to one source, Lauer told the fans, uh, I've been busy being a dad, but don't worry, I'll be back on TV. <laughs> now, I don't know if that's just his own wish or whether he's got something he's considering. You know, I, well, I take him back. Who knows? What? What? Who? said Fox might take him no, back. No, I don't think Fox would yeah. take him. Fox has had enough of their problems with sexual allegations. Yeah. I don't think they want, you know... Someone who's in the midst of that, they don't want that. I wonder bad. if uh, I wonder if they'd throw him onto MSNBC with Brian. <laughs> you know where I would put him? The dating game. Fucking let him be the host. Yeah. Uh, he, Brian Williams. They, they may be him in the middle of the night or something. Uh, hey, all, all these people belong on the Gong Show. They should revive the Gong Show. Dude, they, they, they have re they have exactly. revived the Gong. Is that show. Chuck Barris? No, yeah. Yeah, he was no, to be like an agent no they're doing the Gong Show. Yeah. It's on right now. Good. Wait and see. Yeah. Um, you know. it's, 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 they redid it with what's his name? Uh, uh, Mike Myers. Mike Myers. Oh, that's right. He gets stressed up in that. You don't know. Yeah. 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 Hey, who was the unknown comic in the Gong Show? Uh, that was the guy uh, with the bag. Oh, what was his name again? Oh God, I know the name. Milo something. Or no, 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 no. Oh, the unknown comic. His, oh, God. Hold on a second. I can look it up immediately. Uh, unknown comic. Unknown. Uh, and I, it's on the tip of my brain. That's why I'm so bothered by it. Uh, unknown comic. Uh, uh, Wikipedia. His name was Murray Langston. Ah, yeah. Murray Langston. And who was the girl that was in the pipe? The girl who was in the pipe. Yeah, the one that you remembered from 60 years ago. What? You, what? <laughs> what? you said it on your show uh, on Sunday. You said uh, you could remember the name oh, of oh, the oh, oh, girl. Oh, in the, in the drain. The in the drain. The pipe got drain. Stuck in, a, in a drain pipe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kathy, <laughs> Kathy Fiscus. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah, so, the one see, you remembered that. <laughs> yeah. And, and right. if you give me time, I probably would. Yeah, under certain conditions, I would have just come out with Murray Langston, but yeah. when I'm when I'm suddenly pressured to come out with it, you know, it, it yeah. becomes more difficult. But oh, so if I said something like, "What's the answer? What's the answer?" Yeah, that, then you well, can't. No, it's, okay. like my, it's like my it's uh, like my my uh, neurologist asking me who the governor of New York is. <laughs> yeah, and all of a sudden I'm. Uh, uh, I know he, who it is. And then he says, Murray Langston. Is Murray Langston. <laughs> and then he asked me who the mayor of New York is. Right that. after that, well, tell me who the mayor of New York is. And because I was frozen up from that. Well, no, it's I, not, he's not the mayor. I froze up from that. Oh, you know, but we all know it was Kathy Fiscus. So, you know, uh, yes, yeah. uh, Brian. Uh, my witty response to that question would have been to the neurologist, if I were in your shoes, would have been. Yeah, I know who the uh, governor of New York is. It's a corporatist cocksucker. That's who. That's yeah. who the governor of New York is. By the way, somebody uh, let me wrote me and told me they what they hate about you, Brian, is all your use of curse words because they say 
you're so intelligent and you have such great ideas, but you belie them with using... Uh, no, no, no. There's been a scientific study that said that intelligent people use curse words abundantly. I don't think so. No, no, no. Look, Google it. Google it. I Is read it, that, but I think it's a bunch of fucking goddamn it, it bullshit. It was written by some <laughs> I support you, Brian. I think Whoever that it's... is, tell them, yeah. tell them from me. Yeah. My, my notion of that is that uh, sometimes golly gee willikers just doesn't fucking cut it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Some, Especially uh, when you're not Well, I yeah, thought I would just, just thought At least you don't have one. Tourette's. Because they said you, you ha your yeah. heart's in the right place. It's just you lose everybody with your language. And I went, well, I'm well, not. What is the like age group, to... Alex? What is the age I'm group not, of these Brian I, I said I admit the guy has a, a massive case of Tourette's. But um, I said, I'm not a politician either. That's my in, other response. In this, in this, uh, I, for instance, if I had you on the national radio show that I did the other day, I would have to bleep you and get rid of you. Okay, yeah. that's right. But in this, I would know not to use that language. In, in as well. yeah, in this forum, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, I said, uh, you know, I'm not going to censor somebody. I'm not going to tell somebody what they can say and what they can't say, or how they can express themselves or not express themselves. In fact. I've always been a firm believer that if you if you tell people they can't certain people they can't use that language, you're limiting their ability to communicate. Uh, there are some people who just don't know how to communicate without that. Take a lot of people in, in in my neighborhood in Harlem. I mean, they throw around those words like crazy to express <laughs> themselves. <laughs> and and I would hate and and I used to use as an example that. I would hate to bring somebody in from, say, a, 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 a rap group and tell them they can't use four-letter words. That's how they express themselves. And Brian, uh, Brian, you should enter the annual San Francisco foul language contest in South of Market. No, I'm not kidding. They really have this thing. You know, the winner of know. the greatest string of profanities wins some kind of prize. Now, I photographed a rapper, uh, Modest Yahoo, and he didn't use one curse word. He's a Jew. he's not a rapper. He's a Jew. That's why he's come modest. on, come he's on. a Jewish rapper, Modest Modest Yahoo. Hey, hey, Brian, is that a can of Glade air freshener underneath your lamp? What is that? Yeah, look at that. He's got a can of Glade air freshener. It's mouthwash. Anti-static. <laughs> Uh, cleaning computer screens and whatnot. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, um, uh, so anyway, uh, Matt Lauer thinks he might be back, but I, I think that's wishful thinking. Uh, He's got the set right after Louis C.K. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, let me see. I have another little item, couple items here. Edison Research finds. Oh, wait a minute. This is the one. This will this will drive Phil crazy. Because we got to drive Phil crazy. God, we yeah, haven't. go go easy on Phil. We haven't bashed. You don't want Trump. that guilt. We haven't bashed. If Trump. Something happens. We to haven't him. bashed Trump tonight. I think it's because I'm yeah. even one of the callers on uh, on uh, your friend Walter's show said that you're too tough on me. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, he, and he wasn't a, a gabnet caller. Uh, I as don't, far as I don't, sometimes uh, throwing my support behind Trump is concerned, is the yeah. argument Phil has used in the past. Uh, which I agree with. Even a stop clock is right twice a day. Yeah, but I haven't found him right at all. That's the problem, you know. Not recently, I haven't. I, I can give you that. But anyway, I, uh, uh, I, 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 I didn't care for this half mass stuff and uh, the uh, the uh, ignoring the McCain questions during uh, that was uh, embarrassing. That was when he bashes all the trade agreements, when he's bashed the trade agreements we've had with like other uh, Western. European democracies. I wasn't totally in opposition to what he was saying. I've said it before. What, why, what, what do we need abroad that we can't make here in the states? Well, what I was saying uh, just before that was that Trump refused to acknowledge uh, McCain's death uh, and uh, didn't want to lower the flag on the White House to half mast. And I, I thought McCain deserved that recognition. And, uh, and that's Trump. a good riddance to McCain. Yeah, well, he's done everything he can to make working families' lives more miserable than they have to be. 
He's been a part. Right. He's been a part of the problem for over thirty well, fucking years. Uh, you know, you mean like I'm, voting for Obamacare? Well, I'm going to. I'm going to. Yeah. I'm going to. Yeah. I'm going to disagree with you. On, Public on, options, absolutely. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, but I disagree with you on that, Brian. Only that, you know, nobody's perfect, and uh, especially in politics, people are going to have. You know, I, uh, thoughts and ideas that that you're not going to agree with. In the case of John McCain, uh, he's a guy who I politically probably disagreed with 80 percent of the time. Okay, but he was he was a principled politician. You know, he wasn't like the rest of with them. evil principles. Yeah. I'd piss on his grave, Brendan. I mean, Brian. <laughs> well, but, yeah. I, I I feel. The guy, when he was in uh, the Hanoi Hilton and they beat him for five and a half years and they offered to let him go before some of the other guys and he refused, that that, that showed me he was a hero. That well, he wouldn't take his you know, uh, uh, take the advantage of his to, birth To begin right, with, I, is, I kind of felt that, uh, uh, that, uh, that situation at the Hanoi Hilton would use too much to define him. Uh, there was more to the man than just that five years of getting beaten up. And quite frankly, I even, when I was at Sirius, when they brought up McCain, I said something similar to what Trump said in that I said that, well, let's face it, you know, he got caught. I said, I thought the idea was not to get caught. I understand. But what he did in captivity uh, was uh, heroic. Uh, in that he could have uh, taken advantage of the fact that his father was an admiral and uh, they were going to let him go uh, and he course, wouldn't yeah, yeah. do but, it but now, unless uh, yeah. now, they we, let we don't ones. We don't know how much of that is truth and how much of that is legend, but I'd like to believe it's true. Cause, uh, you well, know, uh, other, but other but, but on the other hand, we, 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 captivity they, they the completely time. glossed over and did not mention his complicity in the Charles Keating situation with the Lincoln Savings and Loans. Uh, in which he got admonished by the Senate, and uh, uh, what was the word they use? The, the yeah. yeah, I did hear people talking about Charles it. was a real crook. Oh, real crook. The Keaton yeah. but he, but he was like dealing that. with him. Yeah, you know. So he and, it was the gold faucets, yeah. and so I mean, yeah. there was a lot of bad stuff about McCain, but the the good in the end of his life, especially, outweighed the bad. And it, you know, it, 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 in this day and age. Uh, we don't have very many people with core principles. He did have some core principles. Whether I agreed with his politics or not is something else altogether. The guy, uh, Alex, the guy hung out with fucking Nazis in Ukraine. He hung out with Azov Brigade, Parvi uh, uh, Sector, you know, uh, right wing I, I, thugs I don't know who flew what, the I, Nazi I flag. I, so I, fuck him. I don't know about that, so I can't, def That's, I can't defend it. It's in pictures. He hung out with well, these I guys. Will, I will look it up. You know, but okay. all, I'm, all I'm saying is, is that the guy was perceived at least by the greater amount of the American public as a hero. And to do what he did in the last couple of days and sit there petulantly and refusing to answer whether he considered him a hero or what did he have to say about John McCain, it was embarrassing, wasn't it, uh, 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 Phil? Phil? Yes, it was. Yeah, I, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't feel it was fair. Now, I didn't, I didn't particularly like John McCain either, but I felt that uh, you know he's a senator, uh, and uh, and they lower the, you know, they lower the flag yeah. at half staff for people like that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yes, Brian. And I was just going to say uh, that verbal trap, that debating trap you tried to lay for me, Phil, that I wouldn't take because I agree that Obamacare was a complete clusterfuck. And I'll I'll go right along with you, but maybe for a different reason. The reason being is that they fucked with the public option and asshole. Well, ass and well no, but, no, but here's what happened. Here's what happened. Brian Emmanuel will fuck us over out of the public yeah, option. Yeah, Brian, he would have passed something far more solid, but he got what he he got past what he could get past because they were well, they were they were they weren't, weren't, they weren't going to go for single payer. That was for damn sure, you know. Uh, uh, and I never felt that Obamacare was an answer, but it was better than nothing. Uh, although the problem is, is that when you go for something that's better than nothing, and then it maybe fails on certain levels, everybody will then say, see, single payer doesn't work. Well, that wasn't single payer. You no, know? it wasn't. And that, that, was, any, any, that was the problem any, with Obamacare. Anybody see the, uh, the or, uh, 
uh, what's his name, Bruce Orr, uh, in, interviews today, and uh, and the reaction by the senators that interviewed him. Uh, it seems as though he uh, can't remember anything, and uh, uh, you know maybe they're going to be locking Hillary up soon. Well, I, 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 I doubt if they, I doubt if they're going to be locking Hillary up anytime soon. I think uh, our boy Trump will probably get locked up faster than she will. <laughs> Dude, that would be funny. Uh, but why don't we focus on Hillary? She doesn't have any power yeah, anymore. Because all, oh, all his uh, friends, all for the his, wrongdoing, all his friends what, are tur wrongdoing? turning tail, and it looks now, in fact, like uh, what's his name, uh, who he was saying wonderful things about a few days ago, is making a deal with uh, Mueller. Manifold. Manifold, Manifold is making a deal with. Uh, with oh, on the second on the second trial. Yeah, it's the guy yeah. who kept the books. He had a Jewish last name, and he kept all the books for Weinstein Trump. or something. Oh, yeah. or Weisenberg, no, Wassenberg, no, no. Wassenberg, I think is his name. Yeah, Weinsberger, or something like that. But it, it, they gave him limited uh, limited immunity, uh, so it's it, it's just for a specific area. Uh, you know, it's not well, full he knows immunity. every check that was signed in the last 30 years for that company. Yeah, but I don't know if they well, are supposed to be investigating that or Russian collusion. Well, he, he, certainly he would have some knowledge of what went on in that, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, uh, if I were Trump, I'd be sweating bullets right about now. You know? What if he has nothing to sweat bullets about because he didn't do anything wrong? Well, the fact Aye. is that I have no doubt he did something. <laughs> I, have, do, I have no doubt that, that he did something wrong. How many people here, by a show of hands, feel he probably did something wrong? Uh, you're it, Phil. No, oh, oh, Scott, you, I mean, why, why be so naive, Phil? Uh, J John Peru. I mean, even if it was Because he guy, hasn't been convicted of you, anything. Did you raise no, your no, hand, Patrick? Well, 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 neither is Hillary. No, uh, Hillary's, no, Hillary uh, is a crook. Wait a minute. What are you, and, what and, and, and Perulis didn't raise his hand. No, because I, I, you know, I, I, I don't know enough about uh, his wrongdoing. I mean, it has to come up in a well, court of law. Well, you knew enough about I McCain's. Why don't you yeah. know about his? He knows about McCain. John knew about McCain. You know, what yeah. I'm saying you knew about McCain, but you don't know about uh, Trump's wrongdoing and what you've well, seen. Well, Trump, Trump is a is just an asshole from day one. You know, I, I mean, convicted. He's got McCain a history was convicted. of wrongdoing yeah. And, yeah. and sanctioned. Uh, Trump has is, is innocent until proven guilty. Yeah, you know, you bring down Trump, fine. But then what do you get, Pence? Pence is a fucking idiot, too. I mean, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I wouldn't call him an idiot. I wouldn't call Pence an idiot. He's... <laughs> well, he's a smart, evil dude, okay? Exactly. Yeah. Patrick. Yeah. He's yeah. younger than Cheney. Patrick. That, that's what I, I want to know... Everybody that is getting ready to come in their pants over <laughs> a imminent, um, you know, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna, uh, impeach Trump. If You're not they, speaking if, on behalf of me, though, Patrick. If they realize that Hillary will not be president, it's going to be Pence. Are they aware of that? Is everybody aware that if he gets impeached and he's out, it Pence? <laughs> They're not going to put Hillary in, and they're not going to put Bernie in. It's going to be Pence. Yeah. I mean, hey, what well, if, that's why I'm not in favor of impeachment. Off on this, they're not. And they're not yeah. thinking far enough ahead that they're going to get an actual hardcore conservative as their president versus uh, letting this guy serve out the next two years, and he'll probably not run again. Hey, you know what? If uh, if Pence became president, you think those guys would like it if Cheney was his choice for vice president? <laughs> you know, imagine a Pence Cheney uh, ticket. Well, this one last item here: cable news channel MSNBC just racked up the biggest achievement in the ratings. Not only is it beating its rivals in cable news, but topping all of cable as the most watched network in weekday prime time for the week of August 20th. The channel announced that it topped number two Fox News and number four CNN in total viewers for the week in weekday prime, Monday through Friday, 8 to 11 p.m. Uh, that was number f and, and was number four across all cable, all cable 
in the key news demos and adults 25 to 54 beating number five Fox and number six CNN. Rachel Maddow was number one across all cable in total viewers and was the number one cable news show in both total viewers and adults 2554. So it looks like the day of Fox being the dominant uh, news network is at an end. But it's been replaced by MSNBC, which is a one note network. It just keeps telling the same story over and over and over again to a point where it's Thank driving you. me nuts. What do you think about that, Phil? If you repeat something often enough, it becomes truth. Well, that's you know Fox certainly realized that. No, it's MSNBC. That you well, know that's why they're they're you using a, uh, a a proven method to. You, don't, uh, you don't But you th see, th MS. Let me let me say this about Trump MSNBC well. and all of these uh, things, whether it be Fox or anything else. These these are businesses, and these businesses are there to make money, and they want to yeah. and 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 they want to get their advertisers. Uh, to, to sell, you know, they're sell, they're selling their products. They're gonna they're gonna say what it is that's necessary to get the viewers that are gonna buy the advertisers' products. These people are not news networks. They are entertainment. And the sooner you know we all realize that, the sooner we'll realize that uh, it, it is fake news. They they they, they show. No, it's not fake news, Phil. It is. It is certainly it's it's it's, it's, it's warped news. It's it's skewed news. Let's right. They show way. you stories, uh, and they're selectively showing stories to make their point and to keep yeah. their viewers buying the products that their advertisers are selling. Now listen, and, we, and we, we, by the way, by, by the way, we have gone full circle on this show. We started off the right. show with uh, Ray in Costco. And That's now right. we have him in his kitchen putting his stuff away that he bought at Costco, right? No, I, well, I did that, and I'm also eating dinner. And was it anything you bought at Costco? Uh, no, no. Do you know what the number one? Do you know what the number one selling I, item is at Costco? Toilet no. paper. No, That's number two. Water. Uh, paper towels. Ooh, good joke. Yeah, no, but it is number two. Uh, uh, <laughs> chicken. Depends. The chicken. Chicken. The chicken. Yeah, from yeah. China. No. Chicken parts processed in no, China is, shipped no, back here. No, they, no, these are local chickens. These are no. The this, fresh chickens. The fresh chickens. The, the rotisserie chicken, is the is the best selling uh, item in Costco. Um, five bucks, whole chicken, bargain of the day, right? Oh, the roto chicken. And what they do oh, is they yes. only keep it on the roti They only keep it out for like less than an hour. They all have times on them, and when the time is up. They send it to the other room and they make it into chicken salad or other chicken-based products. Yes, Patrick. Um, okay, so in 2013, John McCain went to the Ukraine and he met with a man accused of being an anti-Semitic neo-Nazi. Uh, he had some sort of meeting with him and that was it. It was a one-time deal. Um, and that's from Business Insider. So I would say, who fucking cares? I mean, yeah. it, 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 it could, whatever. It could have been just John a, McCain's wife is an oligarch. It, it could have been just a fact. It could have. <laughs> it could have basically been a fact-finding mission. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, but there was no more to it than that. I wouldn't hold that against him any more than if he met with, uh, you know, a Castro or or somebody else who was supposedly an enemy of our country that's the way it goes big fucking deal well patrick they're sending arms to ukraine Th thanks to votes like pe from people like mccain and the people that are well, that's, uh, that's, running no, that no, that's war because, that's, are not but, 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 don't we want uh, to support uh, listen we got to go john the, uh, but, but SSR? after all uh, no. uh, 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 the ussr has been trying to right, go right, after, or russia russia after, yeah. uh, ha, uh, russia's been trying to go after the ukraine so we're there defending them that's all anyway yeah. hey listen that's it for this evening i know you'll never agree because you're right uh the uh, uh, Ray, thank you, and thank you for the tour of Costco. Uh, You're welcome. Makes me hungry. Uh, what did yeah. you get me, Ray? Phil? Some wine <laughs> and a box of depends. Thank you, and thanks oh, to thank both you. of you. <laughs> Some prunes. Thanks to both of you for calling the show on Sunday. I really appreciate it. Uh, Jeff, sure. good having you here. You've been a little quiet tonight, but we love having you here. Brian, uh, always great to have you. Tony, doing okay. Father, doing okay. 
Oh, he's doing, uh, he's doing a lot better. He's still in the hospital. Okay. All but right. he's coming along. We'll keep a good thank thought you. for you. Uh, Scott, thank you. I appreciate it. Kevin, thank you. John, always a pleasure to have you here. And, of course, the lovely and attractive uh, Patrick Blazik. Will you all give a big wave goodbye to the audience out there? There they are. That's the Citizens Panel. I'm Alex Bennett. Uh, that's them for tonight. Uh, coming up next, we've got uh, the uh, inter- intersection with uh, uh, Jack Bishop. And then after that, at 1 o'clock in the morning, yes, it's Connections coming from Florida. Tomorrow night at, uh, oh yeah, I I got this, yeah. Tomorrow night at uh, uh, 8.30 is uh, the arena with the franchise MC, followed by Damian Chaplin at 9.30. And uh, that will be quickly followed uh, by uh, me. Uh, Yes, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye, everybody.